Happy Nindy New Year, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation. I'm Jeff, and today on episode 131, we're taking a look at every indie game hitting the Nintendo Switch through the week ending January 9th, 2022. You can find Nindy Nation on Twitter, come chat with us on Discord, or check out this week's new releases with us right here on YouTube every Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern during our Nindies at Night stream. And this week I'm giving out some free games, so be sure to stop by. Last week I perused the eShop and saw only a couple games releasing, so I decided not to make an episode. Of course, just before the episode would have usually published, a handful more just happened to hit the eShop. So as we kick off the first Nindy Nation in 2022, let's start by checking out the six notable Nindies that released since episode 130. Probably the title that I saw receive the most attention over the past week was Lacuna, which released for $15.99 by Assemble Entertainment. It's a mature-themed pseudo-cyberpunk adventure with excellent pixel art and follows a detective who works for the... I'm sorry, does that say CDI? Gotta imagine that's not the Philips CDI, but uh, I guess you never know. Anyways, it's a game about solving a murder case, collecting evidence, all of that stuff, and it has been receiving really positive reviews. The other game that was pretty active in the indie circle, and one I'm much more interested in, is the $5 3D platformer Unstrong Space Calamity by Nindy newcomer Origami Hero Games. From everything I've seen and read about this release, it seems like the creators were heavily inspired by Super Mario Galaxy and Ratchet and & Clank, as you'll work your way through a bunch of planets, each with their own gravity pull, you'll bash enemies, and then find the next who's what's it so that you can unlock the ability to travel to the next world. I just happened to pick up a copy to check out with all of you, so come by Nindy's at night this Thursday if you want to see this one in action. And Forever Entertainment released two games last week, the first of which was Pawn of the Dead for $9.99. It's, uh, it's battle chess, but I guess with zombies. Clever pun, though. And their other release was Hollow 2 for $19.99. It's a space horror first-person shooter that seems equal parts spooky spooky and shooty shooty. Initial reviews were pretty tepid, though, with most of them pointing towards some performance issues, but hey, maybe it gets a patch and a price drop, because otherwise it looked kind of cool. And then City Connection continues their release of more and more classic cave shooters, releasing not just one, but both of the Death Smiles games, with Death Smiles 1 and 2 for $39.99. Now, I think that is way too expensive for what you're getting, but I will admit that what you are getting are two of the most beloved classic horizontal shoot-'em-ups, and they take a departure from Cave's typical happy-go-lucky visuals for something that is still bright and colorful, but themed around gothic horror. I'll probably pick this one up when it drops to 10 bucks or so. And finally, Cubic Games re-released a classic, uh, chill shooter thing, um, it's a lot like Pixel Junk Eden in that it could be very relaxing or very stressful depending on the mode you play, and it's otherwise really hard to describe. You're watching the video now, so if this looks interesting, consider picking it up. They put a decent amount of work into this port, adding a bunch of modes for any type of player or difficulty, and $9.99 is a fair price. Anything out there for you, or are you still sweating as you look at your backlog from two weeks of absolutely ridiculous sales? Let me know down in the comments. As we kick off the new year, the eShop has an interesting collection of titles that mostly fall in the If you want this, then you probably want this regardless of what Nindy Nation says. Basically, we've got a bunch of iffy releases. But hey, there's still some stuff worth covering nonetheless. So let's dive right in to the 12 new releases hitting the Nintendo Switch through Sunday, January 9th. I debated even including this as it seems almost like an omen to give this team the first coverage for 2022, but hey, f*** it, you know? Let's get this train rolling with Game National in their never-ending quest to release games that look so bad YouTubers cover them just for the laughs. On January 1st, they publish Sorcerer Knights for a preposterous $14.99. 
featuring character art right out of Microsoft Paint and a glorious 4x3 aspect ratio, this budget but surprisingly expensive Golden Axe wannabe is just as sh** as anything else we've come to expect from this team. On January 3rd, we see another Nindy newcomer, this one going by the name Brute Force as they kick down the eShop's door like the Kool-Aid Man with their 3D platformer Crumble for $14.99. It's described as a physics platformer with a grappling tongue mechanic, which immediately makes me think of Chameleon Twist, and I can't think of anything else. We've got a bunch of games kinda like this, with titles like Tori and the aforementioned Unstrong, and while it's hard to recommend Crumble at full price, it might just be worth sticking on your wish list, just in case it reviews well. And then Pineapple Works is back. Well, wait, sorry, I said that wrong. And then Pineapple Works is back. <laughs> with Biker Garage Mechanic Simulator, which is a port of some free game my four-year-old has on his Kindle Fire. Keeping with the theme of games that are way too expensive this week, this pile of garbage motorcycle parts is $25. What the hell is wrong with you people? Here's two titles that I don't think any of you will be interested in, but if you grew up in the 90s, they might be fun to check out with your kids, or maybe just for nostalgia's sake. Humongous Entertainment and UFO Interactive have ported two Windows 95-era edutainment games, Putt-Putt Travels Through Time and Freddy Fish The Case of the Stolen Conch Shell for $11.99 each. These are both point-and-click adventure games made for kids that feature all of the pomp and circumstance you would expect from The Early Days of CD-ROM Technology. Besides being super old, they're actually pretty charming games that were clearly made with the best intentions back in the day. It's kind of cool to see them on the Switch, even if we're not the right audience. I, I don't know, any of you ever play these back in the day or have any idea what the hell I'm talking about? The first Wednesday of the year brings with it a trio of decent-looking titles, each playing to very specific niches. Breakneck City by East Asia Soft and Renegade Sector Games definitely speaks to me with its low-polygon 3D arcade brawler action that seems inspired by Die Hard Arcade above all else. There's two characters and six stages, so it seems like a pretty quick jaunt, which gives me pause for $9.99, but we'll be checking out this one for sure on Nindies at Night, so stop by this Thursday if you want to see that one as well. And if you're into visual novels with an emphasis on puzzles and character progression, Galdra Studios is looking out for you with Arcadia Fallen, which releases for $24.99. Featuring great hand-drawn art, this game focuses on diversity and inclusivity while showing how the choices you make can not only shape the narrative outcome, but also the way your character's personality changes as they work their way through the story. It seems like a pretty dynamic game all around. And next up is... unique... Mick Droid comes to us from newcomer Elephantopia and is a cross between a farming game and arcade-style tower defense. In their description, someone called Lynn claims, This game is love! It's a nice mix of arcade game and tower defense which I've never seen before! Now, I don't think Lynn has played many games if that's a new concept to them, but the game itself does look cute and fun. At $9.99, it could be worth checking out if, like me, every few months you get the itch for some good old tower defense. And then without any games releasing on Friday or Saturday this week, we round out the week with a little Thursday drop of four games, and we'll start with a type of game that we haven't seen in a while. That's right, Marshmallows is a zany multiplayer party game with a gimmick! That also seems to make fun of the way Texans like me say words like wash. You know, like... Wash. I'm gonna wash my clothes. I spilt something on my jeans and now I gotta wash them. And then I'm gonna go up on the roof and drill some nails in to keep the shingles down. You know, damn it, you, you know what I mean. So, yeah, four players on a 2D plane looks like you shoot at each other with some kind of twin stick mechanic, and it gives you a boatload of modes to tinker with, including character progression and missions to unlock new gear. It's 10 bucks and the first title we've seen from developer You Run and Bonus Stage Publishing, but for that price and this premise, I think their first outing could be a fun time. What do you think? The next release, this one by Team Samoyed, or however you pronounce that, is Team Fight Manager. And good lord, what the hell is going on here? 
Is this what the kids call one of those AFK battle games? <laughs> Jeez, this thing looks like a mess. I think you just pick a bunch of characters and watch them battle, but I honestly have no idea. It sounds right, though, given its name and description of acting as an esports coach. I don't know. This one's also 10 bucks. And then, hmm, which one do we end with? The one that actually looks interesting, or... <laughs> yeah, we gotta do this one. Epic Dumpster Bear was one of the very first absolutely atrocious indie games that made everyone sit up and ask, Is open publishing really a good thing? Do not be fooled. The new entry by Equilibrium Systems and Log Games, Epic Dumpster Bear 2, He Who Bears Wins, belongs in the same place that the titular bear hails from. Some people may find that this visually atrocious platformer actually has some merit, but I don't. And I think your $4.99 would be better spent buying five gallons of spoiled milk from the grocery store's clearance shelf after it's been sitting outside for a day. We wrap up the week, though, with a title that I'm really happy to see. Heaven Dust released a couple years ago and was a unique take on the classic Resident Evil formula, where you guide your character through an isometric world of spookiness complete with the tank controls that we love to hate so much. I almost recommended the original game multiple times when it was on sale, but I thought it was a bit too niche to do so. And that's why I'm really excited to check out what the team at Indie Nova has been cooking up these past couple of years, as Heaven Dust 2 seems to really take the series in the right direction. Featuring a lot of quality of life, control, and visual improvements, just like Resident Evil 2, this sequel seems to have better controls, more action, and more elaborate puzzles, all while bringing a much-needed facelift and difficulty options that will suit any style of play. I love what I'm seeing here, and I hope it reviews well. If so, $14.99 seems like a perfectly reasonable asking price. Anyone else interested in Heaven Dust 2? What about anything else we touched on today? You know what to do. Head down to the comments and let me know if any of this week's Nindies are going on your wish list. Going into the deals section of today's episode, I was initially wary about even covering them after we had such massive sales recently because most of them are actually expiring just around the time this episode goes live. But thankfully, just before time of recording, we got another wave of deals with a broad mix of titles I know you'll love and a few cheap little indies I think are well worth checking out. These are the nine Nindy deals at their lowest prices ever through at least Sunday, January 9th. Since I'm the grand exalted keeper of the conch. One of my favorite twin stick shooters on the Switch released in late 2019 and was woefully overlooked, but now's the best time ever to pick it up. Juicy Realm brings with it all of the tight gameplay, variety, and longevity you'd expect from a best in breed trifecta featuring procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. And it does so with some of the most fun environments out there. Playing as one of a group of kids, you battle evil fruit that brings an overall sense of fun and levity to the game that really helps it stand out. Juicy Realm features excellent co-op gameplay too. If you're feeling a twin stick shooter or want one for your backlog, don't miss Juicy Realm while it's 35% off for $9.74. Releasing over the summer, Trigger Witch is prominently featured on Nindy Nation's favorite games of 2021, and now it's 30% off for $10.49. Another twin stick shooter, Trigger Witch brings much more classic Zelda inspiration into the mix. It also tells a fantastic story that'll keep you guessing and compel you to progress through the overworld and dungeons as you uncover what's really going on in this really cool world where magic and religion have been replaced by an unrelenting worship of guns. And y'all, there's some awesome gun puns in there. Ooh, gun puns, that's fun to say. Here's one that I haven't played, but everyone seems to like. And since Disco Elysium just released on the Switch a couple months ago, if you've been on the fence, maybe its 35% discount will help your decision on picking this visual novel meets tabletop RPG while it's $25.99. I can't really share too much more as I haven't played the game myself, but with its decidedly mature themes and an 85 on Metacritic, it seems well worth your time. 
But hey, if you're short on funds after so many great deals over the past month, don't fret because the rest of today's list are all games currently under four bucks. Lo-Fi Ping Pong was a fun little surprise when I booted it up on Nindies at Night in late 2020, as it's a combination of ping pong and a rhythm game set to the tune of, as expected, chill lo-fi beats. At $3.24, the soundtrack is worth it alone if you like this kind of music, and while the gameplay may take a bit of getting used to, I enjoyed the ramping difficulty and overall vibe this game brought to the table. I'd love to play some of the music for you, but their music publisher decided to flag my last video, so, you know, fool them. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, if you want a space shooter chock full of ridiculous gaming parodies, nonstop action, and an audiovisual feast for the senses, look no further than Project Starship X, which is currently 60% off for $3.99. The game includes branching paths, multiple characters to play as, and a difficulty curve that I found very approachable for those of you who, like me, enjoy shmups but often find many of them too difficult. If that sounds like you, give this one a shot. And our last four games, for the sake of time, are all Nindy trifectas, which means regardless of what format they take, they all include procedurally generated levels, rogue-like mechanics, and RPG elements! <laughs> so let's start with Dwarf Journey, which is 63% off for $2.99. This game almost made my top 10 of 2021 because I played it constantly throughout the year. It's a very simple 2D action platformer where the cycle of gameplay kept me coming back as every time I failed, I was able to upgrade my character and try again, oftentimes with an entirely new set of abilities in tow. If you like having a somewhat mindless game to play through as you watch videos or listen to podcasts, put this one in that rotation and I think you'll be very pleased with the results. A very similar game to Dwarf Journey, Kingdom of Arcadia is an even simpler affair, playing as a 2D action platformer where you just walk left to right, swinging your sword at enemies and dodging obstacles, while occasionally taking a detour to find a hidden collectible. Being much more stage and level driven, the roguelike mechanics are much lighter here as you could never really die in the game, but you still get a chance to upgrade your character in between every level. Just like Dwarf Journey, if you want something simple and fun, check out Kingdom of Arcadia while it's half off for $2.99. And then we've got the simplest of simple when it comes to a trifecta, with Cave Blazers dropping down to $2.99, an 80% discount. This is a very no-frills title where you hop and bop your way through underground 2D mazes. Very similar to Spelunky, but more as a rogue light versus a rogue like, which means you can upgrade your character and such. It's not my favorite, but it's worth a couple bucks. And finally, speaking of worth a couple bucks, we've got Space Pioneer, which is also currently 80% off, this one for the low, low price of a buck 99. This is the Switch port of a mobile, free-to-play, isometric shooter where you pick a level, run around and shoot things, and then move on to the next. If you've ever played Helldivers, it's kinda like a baby version of that. It was a guilty pleasure of mine for a couple of weeks last year, so I don't know, maybe you'll fall down this grindy rabbit hole too. What do you think? Any new releases? Any deals? Anything else you're interested in picking up? Let me know down in the comments! Also, be on the lookout because sometime between this episode and next, you should see Nindy Nation's top 10 games of 2021, as well as the final round of voting for your favorite releases over the past year. I had to push Nindy's at night last week due to Christmas dad activities, but we're back on track this week and I've still got some games to give away, so stop by to check out a few recent Nindy's that piqued our interest this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern. The eShop comes roaring back in style next week with a new take on the arcade brawler, a beloved indie finally making its way to the Switch, and Query 8 is releasing a tower defense game, and it's rated M, so I can't wait to see how they perv that one up. But that's all for next time, citizens, and we're all done for today. Thanks so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing Nindy Nation with others. Until next week, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 131. 
And remember, no matter what type of game you're looking for, Ninty Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.